Hola, mis amigos. Soy la mora de Paris. Roche Chanel, and you're watching the Three Count Podcast. Smooches. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, and uh, normally I have a team. I have a team that does these interviews with me. But once again, we have COVID, and in a place where you give hot dogs and handshakes, and you run out of hot dogs, you can't do handshakes because of COVID, nobody wants to show up. So it is what it is. Uh, yeah, it's lonely. But... More importantly, this is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring, which means one thing, we have a special guest for you. Now, you see the team of them right here. You see them right now. They have been a part of SWO, Outbreak, and True Wrestling. Individually, though, you've seen them at SWO, Outbreak, Flying V Pro Wrestling. One of them may have even been on WWE a couple times. And IWA Mid-South. Bring it up for the boys of Dog Nation. Alan Clayball and Sage Matthews. What up, bro? What's good? What's up, man? Thank you guys for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, man. So we have met previously. We met actually in 2020, in December of 2020. What was it? November. I feel like Sage, I just met you just recently. And then Alan, I've met you a couple times. <laughs> Times here and there. Mm -hmm. I met you the uh, one time I went to training at Nick's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sick and, yep, yep. It was it was wild, man. Like it's been a lot of fun, like just like you know, getting back and like getting in a ring and taking some bumps and trying to do this whole thing again and wake up the next morning feeling like I've just been in a train wreck. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so all right, let's get this kicked off started. So I'm just very curious and I have to ask the first question is who is Dog Nation? Huh. Dog. Come on now. Well, <laughs> Dog Nation. Well, we got, you know, two best friends, two dogs. This is my dog. You know, we resigned from the bachelor pad. You know, by, by day, we're getting ready to wrestle other dudes in tights, beat them down for the one, two, three, dominating the tag team division. And then by night, we're usually out partying. Girls, you know the deal. I got so. Trulies in my fridge right now. I might bust a can open for Yeah, them. yeah. We got, if you got something to drink, you know, you can get it. Well, cheers if you need to. Man, I have, I have the glass of water currently. And then later today, um, it will be Terramana. <laughs> like, I am a tequila man myself. <laughs> yeah. So, water is a good way to start this. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't hurt to get a little hydrated before so you don't have that hangover tomorrow and you can go right at it again. <laughs> Facts. It, it really is. Hydration. It helps. So. <laughs> yeah. No, about that. <laughs> so what got you guys into the business? You go first, dog. I started watching wrestling when I was in fourth grade. I was probably like nine or 10. I just, I was watching it and eventually I just was like, I need to try this at least once. And around the time I was 16, 17 years old, I was just looking for places that would potentially train me. I looked around for a while. I went to a couple indie shows. I eventually found sickened Nick, uh, in my hometown of Hanover, some random show ran at this armory and I met Nick. I talked to his mom and dad there at the show. They were like, Oh yeah, come, come down and see how it is. And I did. And I never looked back really. I was there almost every weekend to train and I've had like 300 plus matches now. So things were great when that happened. Dang. Well, your, your history. All right, so I would say as far as, like, what spiked my interest into the business and wrestling as a whole, I would say it started around when I was 8 to 10. And I don't know if you remember back in the day, but when you had the TVs, you could set a timer for how long, 
like the TV would run or whatever. And I would get 60 minutes before I went to bed. Well, I was flipping through the channels and on was Monday Night Raw. And they announced that there was a handicap match. Now, like I said, I'm 8 to 10, somewhere around that uh, age range. And in my little brain at the time, I'm thinking a handicap match. My mind wandered, and I really thought two handicapped people were about to fight. And I was like, I got to see this. But I shit you not, right as the bell was about to ring and the people were about to come down the ramp and all that, the timer went off. And I tried to be sneaky, turn the TV back on. Dad came right upstairs. He's like, yo, turn that off. You're going to bed. And so basically that spiked my interest. And I was like, I have to watch next week. And that was that. I ended up watching and I ended up getting hooked. Obviously realizing the handicap match was not too handicapped people wrestling. And uh, yeah, uh, I fell out of it a little bit. And then a time that really stuck with me, I was in 11th grade. And it was the shield coming down. And Dean Ambrose at the time was the United States champion. He's walking down the aisle. And uh, I used to love when Dean Ambrose, now John Moxley, would like shove people off a little bit with his elbows or whatever. And just to swagger about him. Like, I was just like, yo, I'm meant to do this. Like, and I just kind of knew from there. And then uh, long story short, unless we, you know, hop back into this, but uh at 19 years old, I graduated high school at 18 and then turned 19 two months later. And then I said, I'm going to move down to Kentucky and train at Ohio Valley Wrestling. How was that? Oh, that's, that's lit though, man. And that's like, not going to disregard, right? Like, I love sicking. But OVW, man, is like the place to be. <laughs> it's like, no front. Yeah. Uh, straight up, Randy Orton, my favorite wrestler of all time. I'll never hide it. Love the legend killer, Viper, whatever you want to call him. And that's where he went. So I was like, that's where I'm going. <laughs> I actually have a good buddy who's there now, like training religiously. Yeah, ridiculous. yeah, yeah. So um, if you ever get a chance to go check out Roman Rosell, like he's a good friend of mine. Like Ben. Perfect. We've been friends since like 2003. It's been, it's ridiculous. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> for another time. Uh, so one of my questions I really do need to ask too, right? Cause like the way like the show gets kind of structured is it's like, obviously like the intros, like how you got in, but then like we start to ask other questions. Like what's the hardest part about being a tag team? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I got a good answer. You want me to go? Unless you got one. Go ahead. Go ahead and I'll bounce off I think the hardest t- thing about being a tag team, honestly, for us, at least in my opinion, it's not agreeing on things. It's not like gear. It's not, you know, what's coming up with the name. It's not coming up with moves. I truly believe it is the in-ring psychology and not killing the business to the extent of being in the ring too long. If that makes sense, because yeah. obviously you tag and you know you got a five count, but still making that uh, relevant. And I'm not gonna lie, we're I mean we're victims of it. We've done it plenty of times, and we're still learning how to avoid that. And when there's a time and place for it, because there are matches out there of people of you know that are names and they do it, and the matches are great. And I don't think twice about it. But at the same time, I do want to pay respect to the business and uh, try and respect the rules or whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's a good answer. I like that. Yeah, I was going to say something similar on following the rules seems to be the biggest thing nowadays that a lot of people aren't doing. And like he said, you know, some matches are still great and we don't think twice about it. But mm-hmm. for us, that's kind of what we pride ourselves on is trying to make sure our matches are professional and, you know, the more we feel that we follow the rules, we feel the match is better because of it. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's a good answer, man. So then individually, I'm just very curious. What's been the hardest part about being a pro wrestler? I mean, there's a lot of hard things about it. You know, it's 
a business where you don't make that much money right off the bat. You know, it's a lot of grinding, a lot of paying dues, which we've all done and still do to this day. But my biggest flaw and still is, is being able to promote myself on social media. And I mean, that's why we're here today trying to get out there and promote, but just by myself being on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, I struggle to just, especially in COVID, be able to post content that, you know, gets us a buzz and keeps us relevant in people's eyes. Uh, that you answer, Don? Yeah, and I'll just say, before COVID, I felt like we had a lot of steam going on and uh, I felt like we were doing well. And, no, that's for you sure. know, once, once COVID happened, just because we haven't been that relevant on social media, I felt like we've, a lot of our steam is possibly disappeared for right now you know we we don't know how it's going to be when things come back and we don't know how much grinding we're going to have to do again to get the opportunities that we we had coming up you know we had a lot of good stuff planned and now we got to grind and do it all over again yeah i would uh the bounce off dog here uh i 100 percent would agree as far as with the i feel like us having steam uh, before COVID happened, uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, be going down to WrestleMania weekend and all that stuff. And uh, we would have been down in Florida for a couple of days, flying back, a couple of shows in Jersey. Like, we had a lot of opportunities and a lot of cool matches lined up that I feel like would have led to more. But obviously, we're in COVID all together. So in recent times, I would say COVID is the hardest thing about being a professional wrestler. I just think all the aspects that comes with it, I think that's just life in general, to be honest. It's not like, oh, it's just poor me and Alan and all the other professional wrestlers in the world that are suffering. I mean, people are suffering every day. So I would say in recent memory, COVID is definitely the hardest part about being a professional wrestler right now. Uh, outside of that, before that, uh, I hate to admit it, uh, but I've gotten better at it. We've definitely sparked something in us, and my body has looked a lot better. But there were times just being on the road, just not eating the best. And although my cardio and I felt like I was in in-ring shape, because I feel like there's a difference between being in shape and in-ring shape, uh, wasn't getting gassed, wasn't getting blown up. But, man, my body looked like dog shit, and not good dog shit. Like, <laughs> Same. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. I understand. I understand. Trust me. I watch, uh, I've been seeing like a lot of wrestlers put up their like pre and post videos of like what it looked like pre COVID and then post COVID. And then like the transformation, even like six months, man, it's been crazy to watch, like, um, watch Manny Lemons and like his transformations. I've seen like, uh, Barrett Brown, like those dudes are like, yeah, they really like just honed in and then you just see them just chiseled out. I was like, I hate you guys. I'm going to be on that level too. <laughs> But so let's talk about it, man. Like we get into the match, man. I just want to know, like, what's been the worst bump that you guys have taken? I haven't taken too many bad bumps, really. The only one I can think of, this was before we, Doggy and here, here and I were even tagging. Uh, I was tagging with a guy named JD Smooth in P Pennsylvania. We wrestled Mr. Grimm and Travis Banks, and Travis Banks gave me an Alabama slam, and I just felt like I was rocked afterwards. <laughs> but we finished the match, and, you know, I rolled out, and by the time we got to the back, I felt like I was already coming back, too, and that was literally the worst bump I've ever taken. That was, like, probably four years ago, and... You know, I don't even feel like anybody's even stiffed me really that much, except him. When I've, re I've wrestled him once or twice, <laughs> and and he's pretty stiff. But other than that, I, I've been very grateful to never even really take a bad bump. Um, for me, this happened in 2017, I believe. It was a triple threat. It was at the Monster Factory. Uh, it was me versus Hyena Hex versus Nick Westgate. And at one point, Hex was setting me up for a superplex, I believe it was. And then uh, Westgate came out, clocked him in the back, got him up for a powerbomb. I'm at the top rope. 
I'm like, yo, I could hit something on hex right now. So I did, and I did a blockbuster to him off the top rope. Well, uh, when Westgate powerbombed Hyena Hex, his bump hit first, and then I hit second. So I got the ricochet of the boards hitting my back. So it went Hex bump, then me, and I it knocked the wind out of me. Like, I... Don't really ever get blown up, but, like, I feel like that was the closest thing to feeling like, oh, my gosh, I'm blown up. Because I was gasping for air. I was hiding it because I had long hair at the time, so my hair was in front of my face, luckily. But, like, oh, oh my God, my body just felt rocked. And, like, my body was pretty sore after, but it didn't hurt in the moment. It just, I was just gasping for air. That second, that second wind or the second ricochet of the boards hitting me just knocked the wind out of me. Oh, man, that's rough. We've had a hyena axe on the show, too. We've actually, we've had him on and we've talked about one of his worst bumps where uh, he was, he decided he was doing a corkscrew. I have to remember how Sawyer went. He was talking about, he was supposed to do a moonsault, but instead he did a corkscrew, which bought him more time and everybody was already falling and he just hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great story. I know he. I know he put it up as a clip, so I definitely encourage people to go check out Hyena Hex's page. But yeah, so he's that's a gnarly bump to take, though, man. Like, oh, I'm gonna do this blockbuster, and then it's not successful for yourself. <laughs> yep, yeah, I was technically supposed to be. Well, I guess Nick Westgate would technically be the one out of that bump because he's just power bombing people. He ain't taking anything. So I guess I guess my mind trying to be a little daredevilish, you know. I'm like, oh, this will work in my favor. Nope, I probably took the worst out of it all. <laughs> all right, from from the worst bumps, I'm just very curious. Who's hit you the hardest? Like I said, right here, uh, good thing I'm teaming with him now because, you know, I never have to feel him again in the ring. But other than him, the only person I can think of that's ever – been pretty snug with me is a guy named Tim Rush. <laughs> For some reason, he hits just as hard as him. They and when they wrestle each other, you can tell they just slap the shit out of each other. But yeah. those two, I mean, once again, like I'm just very surprised that I've been wrestling for this long and nobody's stiffed me where I'm like, well, this is a story I'm gonna sell of being stiffed. <laughs> uh I would honestly say. I feel like I've been very fortunate not to be, like, too, too stiff. Uh, I will admit I can be very stiff, obviously, like he has said. Uh, I've definitely gotten better over the uh, years. However, if I am close with you and, like, you should know it's coming just because, like, when you're uh, – I forget who said it, but they said, like, when you're in the ring with your friend, it's when you hit the hardest – and Tim, for example, Tim Rush and I actually used to live together, and we just have quite a bond. I was even in his wedding, so we're good friends. And uh, Tim probably has hit me the hardest, but you best believe I hit him just as hard back. So uh, definitely a lot of welts and a lot of bruises when I wrestle Tim. And just to clarify for any wrestlers watching out there, I will ask you before the match, Hey, are you cool with me being snug by any means? If you'd like to give me a receipt or give it back, I'm not going to hit you to hurt you, but I'm going to let you know I'm there. That's for sure. And then back chop. Boom. boom. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to let you know I'm there. I mean, I understand the idea of our sport is to, uh, you know, protect each other. And I'm not here to hurt anyone, but like I said, I'm going to let you know I'm here and by all means do the same to me. And you know, I, I very easily could be stepped to, to the point where I'm like, whoa, I ain't no tough guy, but I love wrestling, so. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was thinking about that, too, because um, I was running a practice match with one of my really good friends. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll send you the video afterwards. You can hear it in the background. Actually, Alan, you were you were there when it happened. <laughs> but in the background, you can hear and hey, get ready to see some of the stiffest shots you're going to see. And like, yeah, me and my team. Me and my best friend went to town. Been just like laid in form at form. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's right. You're right. You're going to hit your friends the hardest. Because, like, I know a lot of the other guys. I'm like, I like to be snug, too. But, like, if 
you're not wanting to get snugged, like I'll be like, all right, like. <laughs> No, for sure. And I respect anyone that says, like, because obviously the objective of wrestling is to, you know, be safe, protect one another. And if someone's like, I don't feel comfortable if you snug me, like, no, not a problem. Won't think twice about it. Right. I've heard that, too, though. Like, I know, like, um, I've had a, I had a friend. He was wrestling down in the south. And uh, right off the jump, like, they were going to do, like, the strike fest. And he mm-hmm. hit a dude. And the first thing he heard was, like, Oh come on, brother! Lighten up. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> but all right. So after the match, you know, everybody has one of these things that happen. So I'm very curious. Like, what's your post match meal? Post match meal. Well, see, I used to. This is a used to post match meal. I always have a milkshake after my matches, but. Now, I've been cutting back on them. You know, I was thinking that's probably something I should not do post-matches anymore. But, I mean, usually it's always just something quick, like wherever we can stop real quick, you know, a Sheets or a Wawa. And I feel like that's always where we end up hitting after a show is just hitting the gas station and then heading home. That's true. Uh, if it was up to me, my post-match meal would be uh, Chipotle, but I don't want my Chipotle fresh. Uh, uh, but usually by the time we end the show, Chipotle is no longer open. So for a while there, because I would treat myself, because I'd watch what I'd eat before. Like I said, body's not looking the best. So I'd try and watch what I ate for the day. But I would always treat myself usually to two Slim Jims and a Chewy Sprees. I love candy. So I got quite the sweet tooth. And then obviously we would eat whatever was whole, but that would be my treat to myself would be two Slim Jims and Chewy Sprues. Okay. That's kind of cool. That's lit though. Like get the idea going on. Um, And I also know like every one of these wrestlers, every personality I've ever met in the business so far. So whether it's a ring announcer, commentator, managers, faces, heels, they all have one of these. And I'm very curious about your guys's what's been, one of your guys' fan, fan favorite interactions. A favorite fan interaction. That would be a better way to say that. Favorite fan interactions. As like that we've interacted with fans or just any all time. Just all time. Just one of them. Because I know like a lot of, everybody has like like oh well, but I have so many. I'm like, all right, well just pick one. Well, this was this was before Dog Nation was a thing. I was doing a AC Wolf werewolf character. There was twice this guy, same guy, different shows, made me uh, just a big AC Wolf poster, and I still have one. I I, don't, I just moved into a new place. I don't think I have it here, or I'd get it out and show. It. But just two awesome posters he made for me, just for me. He, you know, he would buy all my merchandise. He was treated me like I was some kind of star, you know. So you always remember people like that that make make posters for you when you're really the little guy in in the outfit. That you answer them? Yep. Turn on that There, like most of your wrestlers said, too many, but this was one that came to my head. And I don't even know if it's the coolest, but I don't know. It just came to my head instantly. It would be, oh, I do not remember who I was wrestling. I think it was Scotty McMaster. That's who I believe I was wrestling. But he came out of retirement to wrestle me. And a big part of the match uh, was, you know, just a lot of crowd work, you know, just kind of winging it. It's probably, to this day, one of the most matches – uh, that I called on the fly. Wasn't even planned. There was a structure to the match. And then things just kind of got crazy. So I'm just winging it. And uh, he hits me with something. He's striking me outside. I'm a uh, champion at the time of SWO. Crowd's going wild. And he hits me. And I fall into uh, – these guys are like big SWO fans, uh, loyal fans. Uh, they're the Beckers. And I fell in the one's lap. And I was like laying there. 
And I told the one, I said, I, I, I was thirsty. I had dry mouth. And he opened up his Coke and just fed it to me. And the other, the other one, it's a father and son. And the other one was uh, massaging my shoulder or whatever, telling me it was going to be all right. But uh, I don't know why that one in particular just came to my mind, but it did. And uh, that's just the type of person I am. Obviously, with COVID being insane, I got to restrict. But I feel like there's a lot of interactions. Honestly, I've been told a lot that I don't shut the fuck up when I'm out there in the ring. So <laughs> I just be yapping too much. So a lot of fan interactions. But I thought that one was cool. Like I told him I got caught in mouth and the one said, open up, opened up his coat, gave it, and the one just massaged my shoulders. So. That'd be that'd be that'd be really weird, man. To be like, oh yeah, no, you got a champ. You gonna get there. You get it. Yeah, champ. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, you know, like I genuinely, I like, I just, I enjoy like listening to like fun stories. So these are always cool to hear when I get to check them out. Um, so I'd like to hear from both you guys about this one. But what advice would you give to up and coming wrestlers? I would give the advice now, not that we're anybody to give advice to anybody, but you know, I would just say it's so difficult nowadays. You know, there are so many people come and go in this business, but just if, if, if this is something you really want to do professional wrestling, like, you know, you just got to keep grinding and keep pushing. And no matter what curveball is thrown at you, no matter how hard it is, you know, you just got to keep trying to put your name out there and do what you can to get seen. And, you know, because you, you never know who's watching. I feel like I've heard that from so many different people with, with so many different experiences levels. You never know who's watching, you know, any product. So you just always want to be on, on your game and – I always feel like, you know, now dues aren't paid as much as they used to back in the day. Not that I even paid that many dues, but I've paid more than, than some. So, like, nobody should be afraid to, you know, help set up and help help out with the little things because, you know, those things are very, very much needed in the business. Like, we just, the other day, we, we were itching to get in the ring so bad that we went and set up a one of our training rings, you know, just me, him, and uh, another guy, Dana, Prince Brahma. And, you know, we had a good training night because we, we went out there and we said, you know, let's put this fucking ring up and, you know, get some ring time because, we need, yeah, we need to get back in the ring. We need to get back to doing this. Nice. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of advice I could give. Uh, simply just because I've been very fortunate to experience a lot of things. But uh, words of my former trainer, uh, now Damien Priest on NXT, uh, wrestling doesn't owe you anything, and I am a firm believer of that. And, like, you're going to experience a lot of heartbreak in wrestling. You're going to experience so many ups and downs. It might be cliche to say, like, all wrestling's a roller coaster, but it's true. Um, I know a lot of people that would be uh, bitter about this, but like, I don't think twice about this. Uh, a friend of mine uh, from even in the backyard days, uh, Alex Zane, he literally took over the indie scene, I would say, in about a year and a half, maybe two years. And a lot of people, I feel like, were upset, but I don't give a shit what anyone says. I don't care if you've been doing it longer than he has or you didn't get this opportunity. That's just how fucking life works. And Alex worked his ass off. One of the most humble people I've ever met. So fuck anyone that talks shit on him and says like, oh, he doesn't deserve this. I've been doing this longer. You know what? Piss off. He had what the cut wanted to see. Professional wrestling doesn't owe you anything and he was a value to shows. And now he's on WWE NXT. He signed with the company. Good for him. So, Alex, you probably won't see this, but shout out to you. And, uh, yeah, because wrestling doesn't owe you anything. You need to have that mindset when you walk in. You ain't going to get paid much at first. And if you get lucky, then great. Run with it, roll with it, work hard. But wrestling don't owe you shit. I'll tag him. <laughs> I'll tag He'll make sure. <laughs> He'll make sure he sees it. Yeah, no, um, yeah, it's funny how you bring up, you know, especially Alex. Like, I was – 
I, I've been following him for a little bit. And then all of a sudden I saw him um, on uh, Nerds of Wrestling. And that's actually how I started following him was because a friend of mine, uh, Justin Del Rio, he runs the page. And I started following him. And then next thing you know is I see him just blow up. Him and Anthony Green as another one that was on the same yeah. – podcast and i was like oh wow and then like watch these guys blow up i'm like yo big ups to these dudes so yeah huge shout out some great advice too i was i was gonna tell you i was actually i was at punishment martinez's last match in nxt before he became damian priest or uh, when he first started coming around yeah so when he was well he was up at NXT Bel Air, and uh, it was the last match that he had as Punishment Martinez with Keith Lee, which was a phenomenal match to be to start with. But yeah, it was those two, and then you know Keith won, and Punishment went to the back, and then the next week on NXT, these vignettes came out for Damian Priest, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I realized I was like, dang, that's crazy. All right, but that is it for the big, hard-hitting questions here at the Three Count Podcast. But we do have the best segment of all time in any podcast. I'll say it right here. The Three Count Podcast, 10 count questions. And here's how it works. We're going to fire off questions. I need an answer from both of you. But to be rapid quick, and it's got to be the first answer that comes to mind. So oh, got him. You go first, dog. Let's go, man. Yeah, you guys can answer. You can answer simultaneously, too, so that's cool. But here's how it goes. We're going to put the imaginary timer on the clock. Bing! And here we go. SmackDown or Raw? Uh, Raw. Raw. Favorite TV show? Uh... It's a Netflix show, but Lucifer. I would say The Walking Dead, but I don't watch it anymore because it's wrong to me. (laughs) (laughs) One match you would recommend to your friends? Cesaro and Sami Zayn, NXT Arrival. Um, I don't know the takeover, but... Pete Dunn versus Tyler Bate, the original, uh, not the original Fight Forever Channel, that's since game, Sammy, which is a great match too, take over Dallas. Uh, but Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn, I think is, is phenomenal. That is a great match. Yeah, good take match. over. Pete oh, Dunn won. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? Taken. The Liam Dark- Neeson. Good movie. Uh, the Dark Knight, Christian Ooh. Bale. That's good okay. too. I like that too. I like that. I- it's a Friday I- night. What are you doing? Drinking. Come on now. Right now, yes, drink, drinking. I wish it would be wrestling and then drinking after. But, well, yeah. But wrestling, COVID. then drinking. Yes. <laughs> Favorite color? Gold. Silver. Okay. Batman or Superman? Batman. Batman. <laughs> Just like the, the way you said it. All right. Favorite podcast? Your account. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's not co horse at all, man. It's not co horse. It's not. It's not. All right. Nominate someone to be on the podcast. Uh, to be on the podcast. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Dog. Uh, have you had Nick on here yet? Damn it. That's what I was going to say. Second? Yeah, second was our actually, yeah. he was our second guest ever. Second guest. Son of a gun. Um, have you had Ruckus on here? Yeah, no, not yet. Actually, Ruckus is on my dream list. I have him on my list right now. <laughs> I, I, I think Ruckus would have some awesome stories. All right, Ruckus is a good one. Yeah. You should hit up our boy, Ace Dallas. He's okay. a good friend of ours. He's, he's an interesting character. I'm sure he'd have fun yeah. being on this podcast. No, he would do great on here. Yeah. Uh, one, of our, one of our best friends, for sure. Okay, bet. So, yeah, bet. He's, a, he's a school teacher, too, so he'd have great insight. Yep. <laughs> awesome. And last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single guest that comes on this podcast, favorite curse word? Fuck. Yeah, fuck, for sure. <laughs> well... 
that's it for all of the questions that I have to ask. All I need from you guys now is to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Oh, God. Let me grab my phone. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go first. So on Twitter, I am Sage is Dog, And Twitter is my biggest professional wrestling uh, platform that I use as far as social media. My Instagram is kind of more towards like personal life, but also wrestling. Uh, that is at I'm Harrison. I am H A R R I S O N. But Twitter, give me a follow uh, at Sage is Dog, all lowercase. My Twitter is at Alan Clayball, Alan A L A N, capital A, Clayball, capital C, C L A Y B A L L. And then my Instagram, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing, though. Probably the same thing. Is this? Uh, yep, Alan Clayball. And then Facebook, Alan Clayball. So, and then my real spelling of the last name, C L A B A U G H. But <laughs> wrestling spelling, C L A Y B A L L. Most people can't understand that somehow. But uh, yeah, it is also, I, I do want to throw this out. So, for anyone watching this, Dog Nation is spelled capital D A W G, capital N. A T I O N. All so, one word. Yep, all one word. Capital D and capital N. It's one word. That there you go. So you guys can find them on all their social media platforms, and we'll try to tag them here as well, so that you guys can see it, and we'll probably tag them in there uh, on their episode on the podcast, so you can follow them there. But with that being said. This is the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. And as I mentioned, this is Now Entering with Dog Nation, Alan Clayball, Sage Matthews. So you guys know what to do. Be there for the next episode. And, you know, that's it. Just be there. We don't got time for you to go somewhere else. So, peace. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod. Give us a like, give us a follow. Leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So. Show us some support, please.